Hey, what's up guys? Paul Munoz here from ZeroShGuides.com and welcome to the last video of this mini-series on my favorite features of ZeroShe 2021.6.2. So again, these quick videos are not just about every single aspect of the new features or anything like that. It's more about uh, showing you the practical example of how you can apply the new features and, you know, combine them with existing features as well to create uh, really cool stuff inside ZeroShe. So in this video, I'm going to show you these brushes uh, right here, the snake curve one, two, four, and five. Uh, these are the new ones. These, the other ones were already part of ZBrush or previous version of ZBrush. Um, and these ones are really fun to essentially explore and, and come up with shapes that you otherwise wouldn't come up with because um, it has that element of randomness. And I quite like it in, in terms of designing and, and figuring out you know new, new characters or new creature design, that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you how they work. They're pretty simple. Uh, in fact, all of them are you know, work in the same way, it's just they give you different effects. So I'm going to start with the snake curve one, and as soon as you click on it, it will give you, Sirius will give you this pop-up uh, message saying that this works, uh, these brushes work a lot better with a Sculptris Pro, and that is just because, um, like I said, it's very random, so it's going to distort the mesh, and a Sculptris Pro will generate new geometry as you pull that curve. But I'm going to click OK for now. So right now, Sculptures Pro, this one right here uh, for you, it should, be, it should be in the custom UI, but in the stroke palette, Sculptures Pro, you can enable it as well. Um, and I'm going to click and drag a curve like this. And with this disable, if I click and drag, this is the effect of the brush. You won't see match, right? It, it's, not, it's nothing clever <laughs> or nothing cool about it. Um, so that's why you get that pop-up saying, uh, with these brushes, the best way to go about it is to use the Sculptures Pro. So let's go ahead and enable uh, Sculptures Pro. Let's draw a new curve like this. And now if I go ahead and click somewhere like this, you'll see the behavior of this brush is quite, quite random. And it creates these weird looking shapes that we can sort of capitalize on and create something cool. Um, not that I can see anything right now on this, on this specific shape, but I can click and drag to create a new curve and then move it along like this uh, and you can also change the brush size right and this is one of the cool things about Sculptures Pro so by changing the brush size you literally changing the the amount of geometry that are generated so if I enable Sculptures Pro uh, sorry the <laughs> polyframe you'll see the difference between the amount of polygons or the resolution that this initial uh, stroke created and the one that I just recently added and that's just changing the brush size so if I go with a very tiny brush draw another curve whatever I do here is gonna have a lot of resolution so it's gonna be a little bit slower um, just because it generates those those polygons as I move them um, around now again by Go back to a larger brush, click and drag, oops, click the curve and drag. It automatically updates. In this case, I went too too um, too far with the size. So let's undo all of this and let me show you. That's kind of like the behavior. That's it. <laughs> There's not much to it. Um, but let's go ahead and do something something with it, right? So I'm gonna activate symmetry. And the reason I do that is because this is very random, but once you have symmetry, it's very easy to spot or um, to interpret whatever randomness you create um, and and see faces and, and see a new design. So I'm going to do something like this, right? And it's done on both sides. And I can click and drag and move this around. Depending on which way you move it, it creates uh, different shapes. Uh, maybe a smaller brush size. Do another one here. Like that, and another one there. So you'll see, it's just playing around with shapes and volumes. There's no, there's no match to it really, but they're really fun. <laughs> All right. So let's say that you have that, which you know at the moment it might not suggest anything, right? Um, so you might you might get lost in in the effect of the brush. So really, this video. Um, I decided to make this video because I wanted to show you how you can sort of spot and, and figure out shapes based on this um, on this process. Uh, because you know the the actual effect of the brush is pretty simple. You just drag the the curve and do this, and then you have something that kind of works, right? That's that's the <laughs> that's that's it. This this video could be uh, less than three seconds, but 
if I go ahead and let's say duplicate this, uh, actually let's use a couple of other brushes. So um, this snake curve, snake curve two allow you to create kind of like fins, like sticking out, uh, which could be pretty cool. Right. So there are a couple of videos online that I've seen um, that uses this technique. In fact, in Pixelogic there is a video creating a killer whale with this uh, technique. Uh, the, snake the snake curved four, slightly different. It just twists things as they, as you move things around. Um, one thing you can do though is you can press the Alt key and invert the effect, so you can actually push things in, uh, which might be, you know, an interesting effect. Right, to try it out. Again, all of these brushes are to explore shapes. Um, um, but I have already sort of lost track of what I was doing. This is just like a mess. It's not. It's nothing really. So let me just show you the last, the last one. Um, this last brush or the the Snake Curve Five, it acts in the same way, but it has a lot of noise. So it has a an, an alpha like this. So when you you drag it, it creates a lot of noise. Um, which is again super cool depending on what you're trying to do maybe some kind of like sculpted fur coat or, or something like that um, I'm not gonna use that one um, by the way <laughs> one more thing you can do this and change the alpha to something else like this and the effect will be slightly different right so the the workflow or the technique that I want to show you is that you can actually create uh, a couple of eyes and we are sort of like wired up to to recognize faces a lot easier, right? This is just um, a part of evolution, I suppose. So if you put a couple of eyes or a couple of dots somewhere in this mess, in this chaos, you will be able to recognize those faces a lot easier. So there is a nice um, macro in ZBrush. Again, this comes with ZBrush as well. If you go to macros and you click on macros here, you can ignore my macros. And just these ones come with ZBrush. Uh, there's this one pretty handy called append eyes. If you click on that, Sirius is going to create those eyes or like two spheres and append them. And now you can sort of position them. I'm gonna get out of solo, uh, sorry, get out of symmetry, center that and just scale that down and move that forward like so, right? So now I have placed those eyes and can come back to this sort of creature head, if anything. Um, and I can sort of see some jaws or like the, the top part of a, of a head. So I can duplicate that, maybe rotate it around 180 degrees. Um, let me just check that I'm doing that in the correct axis. Yep, and then just push this down, maybe scale it and rotate it a little bit, maybe the other way around so that we can explore a bunch of other shapes that cool and then I'm gonna go ahead and merge these two together so merge merge down okay and now I can basically take this and click on dynamesh it's gonna create a dynamesh maybe I need more resolution and this area here it's a little bit too flat yeah so I'm gonna have to inflate things just a tiny bit before dynameshing so that I can close those holes a resolution of 256 should be all right. All right, so we'll still have a pretty messy thing that doesn't look like anything, but this is when the the, the Sculptures Pro also comes into play. So I'm gonna use something like the Clay Builder Brush. So B, C, B, uh, that's the shortcut for the Clay Builder Brush with the Sculptures Pro. And I'm also gonna increase my brush size a bit so that I can use my, my Smooth Brush and because we have the Sculptures Pro, I can uh, remove or delete some, some areas. So I can hold smooth, and you'll see it's basically removing uh, certain, certain pieces here. And then I can go with the clay brush and add volume. So right now what I'm, what I'm looking at is how can I integrate those spheres that are kind of like the eyes of this creature, uh, or whatever this is, into <laughs> into the design basically because that's what the, that's what I'm trying to do like the the eyes are just uh, kind of like a placeholder to again to suggest that this could be a face this could be a creature and all I'm doing right now is to try to figure out um, a way that this design could work uh, it doesn't have to be real in fact most of the creatures and stuff like 
that I do um, are just you know fantasy. Doesn't obviously they don't exist, uh, but you have to you have to make it believable so that um, if someone sees it, it's like okay, there's an anchor point, and you can sort of see okay, this could exist um, even if it is fantasy fantasy world, it could exist. I can see that there's a a functionality in the design and, and that sort of thing. All right, so I'm gonna bring in my move brush as well with AccuCurve. And again, I have the smooth brush with the, with the Sculptress Pro. So when I use the smooth brush with a large brush size, it sort of removes topology and simplifies the mesh quite a bit. So I can already see it's kind of like a frog, <laughs> like a frog type of thing. And this could be some kind of fangs as well. So it's just a process of, of exploring, really. And that's what I like about the, the snake brushes or the snake curve brushes. It allows you to you know, come up with designs and things that you wouldn't otherwise come up with. Um, I mean, I had no idea that I was going to make this creature. Uh, but this is what I can see as I, as I work. And again, this needs a lot of refinement and you know, think more about the, the design itself. Uh, but I can bring in the inflate brush and maybe just bring some of these things together to add more volume to this whole this whole section maybe here behind the eye needs a lot more more mass right so there is some something in there uh, holding the the eyes together and i can hold control click and drag oops and redynamize the whole thing maybe bring in my damn standard brush I'm going to remove the Sculptures Pro just to work a little bit faster and refine some kind of eyelids there. And although this is still very, very early in the design process of a new creature, um, there are certain elements that you know become kind of like feature pieces and I can explore them um, and refine them and you know exaggerate them if I need to, like those this could be kind of like the jaw or like the maxilla and the and this you know like a jaw or something like that uh sometimes it's kind of like hard to explain what i'm what i'm seeing in here because it could be just as random as you know this could be uh, actual bone or or not <laughs> i'm gonna bring in my clay builder brush and again this is the the brush that i use to to play around with the transitions and and refine that uh, but anyway, I think I'm I'm just gonna leave it here. Just wanted to show you the a little bit of the workflow and, and the process because that's what's cool about the the brushes that you can generate all these really interesting volumes and then spend time uh, playing around with the with the transitions, like I said, and coming up with designs and and features that you know are not are, are not the usual thing. And again, this one doesn't look like anything yet. Maybe go back and and revisit the the whole idea from a from the distance pulling things around and now i can start to see a more creepy creepy creature but it's all thanks to that to that brush right in fact we can just mask let's say something like this i'm using the mask uh, extrude pro just to do something like that and then that way we can create a quick neck let's redynamize that whole thing so that you can hopefully see what I am also seeing. And I'll just redefine this these areas a little bit more with the with the damp standard brush. Um but yeah, I mean, like I said, there's still lots of things to to do with this creature, but as a starting point you see there is um there's a lot of interesting information and, and a lot a lot of um solid, let's say, primary shapes that you can you can continue to explore and refine before obviously moving into details or anything like that. Um, but it's all thanks to those um, to those brushes that we discussed in this video. So these snake brushes. All right, so I'm going to leave this one here. And with this video, we conclude this mini series on the features of the new features of ZBrush 2021.6.2. So please let me know if you like this type of content. And of course, if you do, feel free to subscribe and you'll get notified when I do a new video. All right, so I'm going to leave this one here again and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.